Um, my name's Kieran. I'm just going to show you a really um, quick way to make sure that your Millennium MPS 850 um, drum module is working correctly with GarageBand. I ran into some of these issues when I was first setting up my drum kit, my e-drum kit to actually work with GarageBand and it frustrated me for hours. So I hope this will help. So um, the first thing to do is to jump over and make sure that you have MIDI connect connectivity on um, GarageBand. Um, so that should be just a matter of plugging in your MIDI uh, cable um, into the USB-C adapter, in this case, in this Mac. Um, so once that's actually plugged in and your drum module is switched on, I find I have to switch on the drum module after I plug in the MIDI cable and after I start a garage band. You should be able then to hit, say, for example, the center of the hi-hat and you'll get um, a signal sent and that will be picked up by GarageBand. The problem is that if I hit the edge of the same hi-hat, nothing gets picked up and that's pretty annoying. Um, and just to demo that these notes are, these MIDI notes are actually making it true, I'm actually gonna just show you if I record here. Um, you can see here if I hit the middle of the hi-hat again, you can see a note notes are picked up, but if I hit the edge, notes are picked up, but they aren't resulting in any sound. And so that means that that um, particular MIDI note has not been mapped correctly true. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So what you're gonna to have to do is download this MIDI pipe software, it's completely free. Um, so once you've downloaded that and installed it, um, you'll want to start it up like so. Um, so what we do is, um, I'm just going to create a pipe called Demo Pipe. And what you're going to do is create essentially um, a set of instructions um, or a pipe that the, each MIDI signal has to run through before it actually gets to um, your GarageBand application. So we do MIDI in and we do MIDI out. So that's the simplest pipe that we have. Um, but in the middle, what we're gonna do is add this thing in called an A-list, and that's gonna allow us to see what MIDI notes are actually being sent. So what we do is we hit MIDI in and just configure this. It's, as you can see, it's coming from the, the input is from the e-drum module. And I'm gonna click hijack here, which means it's gonna take over that MIDI in. And then we're gonna to go to A-list here. And this is really, really useful, and this was the missing piece for me. So um, here you can see that there is always signals being sent. Um, there's these kind of timing clock signals being sent. So you can actually turn those off and you can actually clear the list. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna hit the middle of the symbol again, like so. And you can see that two signals are sent. There's a note sent for signal on for A sharp tree, and then a note for off A sharp tree. If I hit, the, if I clear this list and I hit the edge of the symbol, I can see that there's a note sent, which is D2 um, on and off. So what that's telling us is that the drum module is sending two different um, MIDI notes, depending on what part of the symbol I hit. Now to fix this problem that we have in GarageBand, what we basically need to do is we need to map it so that when the D2 is sent, we want to actually map it um, to the previous note, which was the A sharp tree. Okay, and so to do that, we simply add another component to our pipe. Key mapper. So we're gonna drop that in somewhere in the middle here. And in the key mapper, like I said, if we have a look at our A list um, and we hit the edge again. So we're gonna map our D2 to our A sharp tree. So we go to our key mapper and we go D2 here to a sharp tree which is here okay and then the final step is on MIDI out make sure that you send it then to the actual MIDI output so that should set up the pipe so we're going to save that and we'll just call it uh, demo pipe and we'll just save it somewhere on the desktop uh, yeah sure um, We're also meant to make sure that pass through is set to off. Now what we're gonna do is jump back to GarageBand. Now if I hit the middle of the symbol, I get this 
and we'll just actually record this to show you what I mean. So the middle of the cymbal, you can see that we get that, that open hi-hat sound. And if I hit the edge, I also get the open hi-hat sound now. It's the same note and it's been remapped by the software. And that's pretty much how you do it. You'll probably need to do that with a few other um, cymbals. Certainly on the MPS 850 kit, I had to do it with my, with my crash, I think. Um, so yeah, I hope that's useful and saves you um, a bunch of Googling and a bit of time. Thank you.